Well, Jack, let's have a look at it now. So what have we got What here up on the screen? Uh, this is actually the uh, T-Rex model from King Kong. It's a good example of, uh, of actually a middle-of-the-road uh, asset that uh, Weta will now be painting in terms of complexity and polygon count and the amount of textures. So this isn't a dumbed-down model, this is an actual model? This is a, a, a true production model that, uh, that represents really kind of the, the stock in trade of, of what Mari deals with on a daily basis. Now, how complex is this model? We were talking about it being a production model before, but I mean, mm -hmm. just how much grunt are you playing with when you're doing that? Um, this is a, a, a relatively uh, simple model in terms of, uh, of wetter's requirements. So this is... Uh, so I'm guessing simple for wetter is really complicated <laughs> for me. So what is it? So, so this is about um, 1.3, 1.4 million polygons. Right. Um, I can bring up the wireframe here and, and see that it, it, it's pretty dense. Um, but th this isn't really a, a particularly uh, big model in terms of uh, what Mari is able to deal with. Um, w I have seen uh, models up to 20 million polygons uh, being painted without much of a problem. Wow. I mean, that is, that is astounding. Not only the performance of the size of the model, but just the performance of being able to then, as you say, see this moving. Because uh, mm -hmm. that, that difference between doing a neutral pose and trying to get that actually working in production, it's just uh, it's unbelievably good. And then that, that uh, performance we're seeing has how many 2K textures on it? Uh, visible at the moment, they're probably about 500. Wow. Um, there's, uh, I have uh, two channels visible in the shader. I have the, the color and the specular. Um, and there's about 266 uh, textures per, per channel. OK. So now, show me how I would go about using um, a stencil or, for, or a projection map texture if I wanted to add something to uh, okay. some part of this. Sure. Well, over here I have the, uh, the image manager, which is just a, a, a place to hold all of your reference material that you're right. working with. I can go to a, um, a tool that we call Paint Through. And using this, I can pull in uh, whatever reference I have. I can uh, manipulate it and get it in position. And then I can just uh, paint through to get that down onto the surface. Now, the philosophy here is very much along the lines of using real textures in this kind of projection stencil approach as mm -hmm. opposed to doing um, a procedural base with paint over. But you've got a workflow that that accommodates, does it, or not? Uh, we have various techniques that we can use in terms of uh, using real-time uh, GPU shaders and then baking the results out. Um, it doesn't, at the moment, map directly onto uh, Weta's workflow. So it isn't a, a workflow at the moment that's fully exercised, but it is top priority for us, and we do have some things in the, the pipeline to, to deal with that. OK, so you've now put that texture on top. What can I mm -hmm. do in terms of either going back with undos or mm -hmm. just because it's on a separate layer, being able to mm -hmm. fade it in and out before it's baked down? Um, I have a, a full undo system. Mine has a full undo system. And um, I can actually, uh, before I project this uh, information, I can modify it in quite a few different ways. I can filter it. I can apply a, a spline warp. I can uh, fade it out. We also have a, a fairly comprehensive masking system as well, uh, which allows you to mask off different areas of the, of the surface that you don't want to paint or, or have projected onto. Right. So um, now this is uh, existing on a timeline. Mm -hmm. it's, um, oh, are you going to warp that? Oh, uh, yeah. So I'll, I'll just show the, uh, the warp tool because it's one of the things that the, the artists are incredibly... Uh, well, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> awesome. Um, so we can kind of dynamically change the, the resolution of the warp as we go so through. So that's a warp on the projection or um, the warp on the result of the projection? Uh, this is a warp on the projection. So uh, Mari is in real time projecting the, the paint onto the surface and I'm, I'm warping the paint as it's being uh, projected. We do have a, a bunch of tools that work both on unprojected uh, uh, textures and onto uh, the existing textures as well. So Clone Stand, for example, will work from the from the surface that you've already uh, projected onto or from the paint that you're painting at the moment. And so what sort of textures have you got on here? You said 2K at the moment, right? Um, yeah. Well, a I lot can, of them. But. Um, I can actually um, jump to the, the UV view and we can see um, sort of uh, each one of these textures is probably 1 or 2K square. Right. Um, and I can kind of zoom down into here and we can see sort of the level of detail that that you have there. And at the moment I have um, two channels loaded. I have a diffuse channel and a specular channel. But um, we, we don't limit you in the number of channels that you can have. So let's say I had uh, something that isn't as organic as this uh, T-Rex, which obviously has 
as you'd expect, no particularly large flat surfaces that might, on a poly count, mm -hmm. um, even themselves out. But, mm -hmm. a, but a table is a good example. A table, sure. an antique table, would have a lot of polygon count around the edges, but mm -hmm. the top surface may, in fact, be relatively minor in its mm -hmm. uh, poly count. Does that pose a problem? Um, maybe a 2K texture wouldn't be enough there. Um, well, we actually support up to 32K square um, in the engine, so... Now, 32K that's usable, or 32K theoretical limit, no one's ever used it? Um, we've run it through the engine and uh, it responds fine and we can paint on it. Um, at the moment the the workflow has been tested up to uh, hundreds of 4K textures. Right. Um, but uh, we believe that the 32K workflow will be uh, as responsive as, as this workflow. So just to be clear about this, we're talking about a 32K as opposed mm -hmm. to a 4K texture mm -hmm. that I could then put on a, as a flat surface. Sure. So is that does that mean that everything now, because you've said that this one was all 2K, mm -hmm. is that by nature of the program, or can I just say, oh, I'd like 32K on the top here because it's mm -hmm. flat, but by the way, I want a bunch of 2Ks for the, the legs of the table? Ab absolutely. For each different section of the object, you can specify a, a texture resolution, and that works per channel as well. Oh, okay. So if you want the underside of it to just have 256 by 256, because nobody will ever see it, that's fine. If you want your diffuse channel to be at 4K and your... Uh, displacement channel to be at 32K to get some really fine details. That works as well. So we don't put any limitations on um, how and where you allocate your, your, your texture data. So now what am I looking at in terms of the shaders or the rendering of this for the purposes of doing your work? I mean, how much control? Because this is obviously not designed to actually output the finished frames. It's output mm -hmm. the finished textures. How complex can I get with my actual... Um, uh, re really as complex as you like. We have uh, the ability to define uh, multiple shaders per object. So uh, a typical workflow might be having a, a basic um, shader which just shows you the, the texture you're currently editing. And then maybe going to a, an intermediate uh, shader which shows you maybe the interplay of the specular and the, the lighting. And uh, if you wanted to, you can extend the, um, the shaders as, as much as you like by adding new modules. Uh, so, for example, if you wanted uh, two diffuse uh, channels layered on top of each other, um, you could do that. If you wanted uh, to see the interplay of, say, four different specular maps, you can do that as well. Um, so, really, the, uh, the shaders can be as complicated as your, as your graphics card will support.